nothing beats the buzz that you can get in a creative environment with a group of creative people that just gel and click. Let's talk about post university. Uh, talk to me about that experience. You know, what, what was your first initiative as soon as you were done university? How did you feel? What, was it relief or? Yeah, I was excited. I was really excited to get out there. Was there a pinch of fear? It's interesting because for me, most of that gets mixed up with excitement and excitement okay. overpowers. I'm, I'm an optimist. That's good. So you use that fear and all those mixed feelings to kind of fuel into your uh, drive and positivity. Definitely. That's cool. Fuel, yeah. Okay. So, and what was your first initiative? What did you do? Well, whilst I was at university, I worked in, in the, the corporate entertainment space, doing team building and um, either being a roadie mm -hmm. for events or actually managing events for a handful of different companies. I started with one and then um, I, I got to know a couple of more guys that owned different companies and I ended up working for about five different event companies, one of which offered me a job before I finished uni. So when I did finish, um, they offered me a job, we agreed terms. What was your um, roles in, in, in the events industry? So whilst I was working just to get by through uni, I was an event manager. Okay. Um, and then when I came out, they employed me as a designer. Okay, so you're doing the design work. So is this like stage design, decor? It was everything. Wow, okay, brilliant. Um, so some of it were, could, could be the layouts of the sets. Some of it could be actually creating some of the artwork for the, for the sets. A lot of it was in terms of marketing and branding for them. So if they'd want to run an advert or if they had specific event collateral that was required, I would create that. Um, and if there wasn't massive requirements for that, I would work on improving the company's brand and identity and, uh, and, and, and anywhere I could contribute, basically. Okay, cool. Uh, are you a bit able to disclose which company you work for? Or? Um, I worked for a company called Aventurous. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so you're working in this events company. How long did that, uh, what, what, you know, take me forwards as we move on? That was about 18 months, I think. Might have been less. It's a while ago. <laughs> okay, so just over a year. Was that like a senior design role, would you say, or a I was junior? the only designer in, in there. Okay, so okay, you're sold the only designer within that uh, team. It gives you a lot of authority, I guess, right? Um, mm. I, I've I've been in that position before. It start a business or a new company, and you know, just being the only designer there, you you have the privilege of being that authority, which is pretty cool. I was being mentored by one of the directors as well. He took me under his wing. Okay. Um, and he more or less directed my workflow for me. Was he a designer um, as well, or? Uh, no, no. He he was out of the partnership of the company. He was more focused on the sales, the acquisition side, um, and had a very keen eye for marketing in general. Cool. Okay, so take me forwards. What was your next uh, move afterwards? So I, I left that company through choice. Um, the reason is, is that I had a multi-skill set. I was a designer, but I was also an event manager. Okay. So when they needed one, I would fill that role, but I still, still need to be a designer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel I could grow in, in that environment because the, this side of it, I just couldn't lose because that's what they knew me as. Mm -hmm. So I never actually went about applying for another job. I knew I needed experience. And I, 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 I don't know why, I, I never applied for another job at that point. Okay. I decided to start working for myself. So I set up as a sole trader, um, lucky enough I'd had experience of that from being in the, the, um, the building industry. So I was registered as a sole trader, so I knew the process. Okay, so, so you're already could, taking a freelancer by then? Pretty much, that's, yeah. that, that's what a lot of the people are in that industry. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think you get like a CIS card, you have to register for that and go on a course, and yeah. then um, you register as a sole trader and you do your own tax at the end of the year. Of course. Um, so, so that's how they hire you, basically, because then it's, the contracts are more loose, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so they, got can, it. they can drop you and pick you up wherever they need you. So got it, yeah. People in my trade move around. Um, so, I'd already got exposure to many different companies within the, within the event industry. I'd, wor I'd worked through um, for a couple of them, actually as an event manager. 
And they knew me also as a designer because I just worked for one company. Um, and they continued to actually ask me to do some work. Whilst I worked for them, I designed a couple of, or contributed also towards a couple of their actual events. Designed the collateral, designed the actual structure, the flow, how it would work. Um, and a lot of them would involve bespoke designs for the client. So their clients, um, so they would still come back to me for those work for that work. So I just had to put a price on it and say, well, to do one of them, it'll cost this much. And then I started marketing those ideas to other companies. Oh, okay. Um, so you so must have you almost had your niche. I did have them. a niche, yeah, yeah. most definitely. Um, and okay. I did that for two years, working with firstly anybody that that, that would that needed any design work done at the same time. But my foothold was in corporate entertainment at, at the time. Because mm -hmm. I've worked in the industry, I'd been an event manager, I'd, I'd met lots of different people in there, and lots of different people needed either, you know, needed brand elements or flyers or collateral, or if they were doing an event, they would need visuals for event, uh, event stuff, so. Especially event stuff is always uh, renewed, right? It's always updated and renewed constantly every year, right? Because there's fads. Exactly. You know, the, the new film gets released, everybody wants to do a, a fancy dress party in that theme. Definitely, so yeah. So you've got, you've got to redo all the sets and everything. Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, so brilliant. So you kind of took your career forwards and you were working, so would you say you were always, you, you were a freelancer throughout that period? Did you ever jump in in another uh, full-time role in-house after that? I, d I did that for two years and then I moved to London. Okay. And then when I moved here, I realized that the the sort of money I was earning back then, I wouldn't be able to sustain on here Yeah, uh, quite quickly. It's quite expensive in London. Yeah, massive difference. Yeah. <laughs> so when I first got here, it was a bit of a shock. Um, yeah. Although, once again, forever the optimist, I viewed it as, wow, I get to actually start my career now. Mm -hmm. So now I look for a job. So I did, I, 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 I took, um, I, I, say I, took, I worked really hard actually to get a job. Um, in a telecoms company, um, working for an MVNO. Okay, so it sounds like you knew what you were trying to uh, get. Um, like, how did that happen? Did you were you just flicking through the pages looking for a job, or was that what you wanted to work in specifically, or you come across it? No, this is the beauty of London. Um, it's pretty much the gatekeepers to the industry are the recruiters. So you don't pick and choose the jobs; you get told what's available. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and you have to just run with that, I guess, right? You just take, take, you know, if you've got to pay the rent, you just take whatever's whatever is going, that. and exactly. whatever looks like the, the most decent deal that's going to be a good step for your career, you take it. Definitely. And for you at that time, was this telecommunications, uh, you say? Drop? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And what was your role and what were you doing? Um, so I was employed as a digital designer um, initially for them. I say right until then, I did the majority of print. Okay. Um, for our audience uh, out there, you know, they might be uh, digital might be quite vague for them. Can you kind of define what digital meant for you or yeah. for that company? I mean, for them, I also worked on on print. It was almost, I'd say, predominantly digital. So it'd be sixty forty. Okay. Uh, sixty on digital. Mm -hmm. Give or take a bit. Um, it was pretty much their website guardian okay. is what I became. Um, anything online, their online banners, uh, an animations, uh, refining the user experience of their website from uh, initial landing on the website straight through to purchase. Also a lot of the email campaigns that would follow after in terms of how to keep the customer updated on, on what's happening or even what the next steps are. Here's your confirmation email, click here to go here and it was all that information. I ended up copywriting and all sorts for them. Okay, so again, quite multidisciplinary, just like uh, Fizan was uh, speaking of in his first uh, early times in his career. Yeah. Uh, what what happened afterwards? Uh, uh, you know, moving forwards, um, was there uh, any other? Did you kind of like like your partner Fizan? Did you kind of move through different in-house roles, or did you stick to one job and just stick to it and kind of develop your? Uh, authority and your position there. Uh, as they say, you know, climb the ladder within one company. Some people, you know, think there's a, there's a lot of advantages to doing that, mm -hmm. uh, but some people prefer to bounce every three years or one year. What was your kind of, uh, like, what was your kind of move and what, yeah, what was your circumstances? For me, I would have loved to find one job 
and hone in on my skills and develop and develop and work my way up mm -hmm. right up to managing director um, of a company if I needed to I, I would would have been happy at that um, I smiled when you asked the question for a really good reason is that I've only ever left since the first job mm -hmm. I've only ever left one job I've never been fired the rest I've been made redundant from so you were talking about the economic climate at uni and it was happening just after okay I pretty much was hitting that so in London there's a lot of companies so that were doing the search down. for looking looking for a job that's 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 hard yeah 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 because um, I was in uni at that time so you know I didn't have to really experience that yeah, yeah. It, it was I, I say it was tough but the, the thing is I look back and I was all smiles because so that company it was an MVNO um, and, and funny enough here's the interesting story that company was bought by the same company that I met for Zana. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they were taken over, they were bought by a competitor and pretty much shut down the next morning. Um, and a lot of people really gutted and, 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 and upset. And I was excited, even though I'd worked on a project for months and I was supposed to deliver it that, that week, I walked in and they brought the lawyers in and they pretty much said, right, one by one you'll have a meeting. Wow. But here's what's going on. And I'm sat there with my files of this project that I've been working on for ages, oh, no ready way. to deliver it and pitch it that day. Um, but in all honesty, it was a really hard environment and that was my only exposure into working in London and I thought everywhere was like that. Mm. So that really toughened me within my first job. Um, and the marketing manager there as well was very tough and I worked with other designers and the environment there, they were pitched against each other to work against each other intentionally. Wow. Now, I can't stress enough that an environment like that does not produce anything good. That's probably the only massive negative thing I'm probably ever going to say <laughs> during wow. this interview, mm. but I feel really strongly about that. Um, so it was an absolute blessing in, in disguise. And whereas a lot of people are really upset and, and understandably, you've got rent to pay, you've got kids to feed. But what, what, what was the reason behind, I mean, you said a company bought, bought you guys out, is that it? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they so, bought. So they had to get rid of the employees? Yeah, they, 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 I'm not fully sure of the reasons it would be, okay. um, I'd be assuming. Okay, that's fine. But in regards, so you guys were hit with this kind of uh, catastrophe. Uh, but you said it was a blessing in disguise. Did you see it at, at, as that at the time? Yeah, definitely. Oh, you did? Wow, okay. Yeah. So it's really hard to have that mindset, to really think of, you know, this huge calamity as, uh, you know, a positive thing. Uh, and I think a lot of us struggle with that. Like, I think people are so fearful about losing their jobs, losing a client, uh, you know, you know even, if, even a slight opportunity in having a pitch with a client, losing that. But, you know, just to have that positivity, that positive insight at all times and just to be completely, um, you know, tr just in a, in a state of trust, you know, that things are going to go well is, is really, really, I think, uh, important for, for any designer, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in one, in, in this in industry, secondly, in, in a, a financial climate like that, um, it's yeah very tough and, and, and you don't really know what what could happen for one minute to the next sometimes of course so having uh, an open mindset and being opt optimistic which is i remember shaking the hand of the the, the managing director of the company the, uh, the guy who founded it and i was still smiling at the time like don't worry about it you'll be fine like you know <laughs> and, and he was you know he, 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 he was probably he probably uses us <laughs> I he smiled imagine. back and said it's, <laughs> oh, really? it's okay. an absolute pleasure i mean obviously throughout this full day he had to look pr pretty pretty sad but, wow, okay. uh, but you know he's, he's small it's amazing how positivity just spreads it's like a virus I mean yeah. uh, not a virus a, a good virus <laughs> well it, yeah. it's funny you say that uh, me and Fazam were talking about that just the other day how much okay. a smile can do and it's definitely yeah. <laughs> uh, brilliant so that you know that's just amazing uh, you know you told me about uh, I think a really kind of uh, turning point in in your career um, just quickly we want to kind of move towards um, closing the session but was it, you know, is there any other kind of peak moments in, in your career after that? In regards yeah, massively. To that? So yeah. I'll, I'll do a quick run. Yeah, please. Yeah. From there, made redundant, moved to uh, an online publishers. Okay. Worked for them um, in various different areas, but I focused on an online gaming sector within their oh, company. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, mm, could be to some degree. <laughs> 
Um, Depends what game, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, work, I worked for them, did a lot of promotions, um, and they went through a huge migration. I managed to work with one of their marketing managers there, and we pretty much ran the whole communications to the, the customer base together during that migration. A really exciting project to be on. It was huge um, and really difficult. Unfortunately, that company also got bought over um, and we were all made you, you, you got a so, pattern. So it happened again. So either I'm the kiss or death, the kiss or death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can find that sometimes in life. There's this pattern happening. You just wonder, is it me or is it? Yeah, well, I, yeah. I did get to a point where I was cracking jokes about it. So yeah. uh, to my next employer. <laughs> Good luck. Mm. But from then um, was probably the most pivotal moment in my career. I moved to an agency uh, that was a small agency. And they took me on. Again, as um, a creative agency, or yeah, so it was a creative agency. That must be quite a different experience because, uh, from my experience, I've never actually worked in a cre design agency myself. Uh, I personally, I run a design agency that's uh, where all the designers are outsourced. Mm -hmm. So I, pos I position myself as an agency, but I, I don't have an office and I don't have uh, actual working space. But all my designers are uh, offshore. Um, but I can imagine, I've worked in-house in a lot of companies, and I can imagine that experience, comparing that experience where you have a, you know, a CEO and then you have other people working in different areas would be much more different to just a creative agency where everyone has different expertise within the creative sphere. Mm. Um, how has that changed? Was that, do you notice a significant change moving to, from that corporate world to... Um, a creative agency? That changed everything. Okay, wow. Um, for, for me, and, and I speak from my own experience, and, and it's because of what happened in that environment. One thing that you transition from client to client to client throughout mm -hmm. one day, you can be working on one project for the first half, another project mid-afternoon, and by the end of the day you're working on another project. Mm -hmm. There are three different sets of brand guidelines you have to get your head around, and you have to not only understand them, read the brief, and deliver that work within that time frame. Um, you quickly learn to estimate your timescales. You quickly learn to understand brand guidelines and respect them very quickly as well. Wow. Particularly if you end up writing them, um, you then really appreciate why they're put in place. And, and as a designer on the other side of actually creating work based on the effort put in, into the guidelines, you actually you know, take the time to understand it. So there's a lot of different dynamics as of, of that for me, part of it. But for me, the biggest, um, the biggest thing was I moved there within a few months, the studio manager left and he decided he was gonna move on to somewhere else. And the two directors sat me down and basically said, uh, we're gonna have to find somebody to, you know, don't worry, we, we know you've, you've not long joined, joined us. Uh, we're gonna have to find somebody to, to fill that slot. Mm -hmm. um, and I basically said to them there and then, um, can I just pause you for a second? How about you give it a month? Give me a month. Let me take on that responsibility. And if I don't deliver in a month, then I'll continue to do to do what I what I do. And then you can find somebody to come in. Um, but I really like to fill that that slot. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, "Are you sure?" And pretty much jokingly said although they were serious, <laughs> um, by all means, but your, your head's on the chopping board. <laughs> wow. It's a big responsibility. It's banter, yeah. but uh, yeah. It is a big responsibility. Mm. Yeah, and so, you, wanted, you wanted that, I think. I, think. I was hungry. From yeah. the second of getting into London, I was hungry. I wanted yes. a job. Um, I, every interview, but not just a job. You wanted to get that position, that authority, I suppose, within a company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it was my first, uh, first ad agency and, yeah. and, um, or creative agency, yeah. should I say, because that's exactly what they are. I think not, not a lot of creative people, uh, designers, they, you know, some people just want to keep their head down and do their work and just be a designer, right? And uh, you, ha you see different mindsets of, of, creative, of designers out there. Uh, you know, some people want to do freelance, or, but some people feel like the, secure, the security of a full-time job. Um, you seemed like you wanted, to, you wanted a, to work in a company, but really... Uh, put yourself, make yourself vulnerable and have that kind of, uh, uh, you know, higher role. Uh, you know, how, how would you say, you know, you know, what was your drive for that? Like, what, you know, what was the intention in trying to pursue that specific thing? Was it, was it the experience? Was it because you wanted to learn to manage a team or was it, was it what was it for you? Two factors. I, th I think the one route that 
a lot of designers have in, in their mind is that they want to be a creative director. Um, and, and I had that in, in my head too. But I think that was a stepping stone to really where I wanted to be. Um, and for me, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit and I knew the end goal, the end, end goal for me was to set up, whether Your it be in design or, or, or anything, um, okay. that I was going to set up my own business. And I knew it, um, and I'd say that with true conviction that that's exactly what I knew I was going to do. That got lost somewhere along the way, but it was still in me, mm -hmm. because I thought my end goal was creative director, and, yeah. and for me to get exposure to being a studio manager and running the studio, and um, in that context was a little different than what the actual role is in the industry. A studio manager is somebody that actually isn't a creative, or uh, they manage the process, they're, they're, they're more like a traffic manager. Or, uh, I didn't know that, or understand, or respect it. So I was a creative studio manager, I, I was hands-on, I was art directing. Um, my team evolved during that time period, I got to manage lots of different people, I got partnered up with a copywriter and was fortunate enough to get mentored by the director, one of the, the well, by both directors um, and they brought in two creative directors, three creative directors as well and I was fortunate enough to have allocated time and be trained by them too. Wow, okay. So that's, so, that's, that, that's really contributing to the development of where you now, which is now running your own business, uh, mm. which is Unrattled. So that's, that's really awesome story. I think uh, people, you know, really find their place and their role within the story as well. You know, whether they want to be, um, whether they want to just kind of keep their, you know, stay, stay uh, comf comfortable within a, a simple design job and kind of work up that ladder or, you know, stick to a senior design role. But some people, as you said, have that entrepreneurial spirit, and I think that's uh, that. That's still quite early on. Would you say it was even before university, potentially? Like, I think. You see, I've challenged myself in so many different areas in terms of where does it come from, and I'm a believer that I think you can learn it to some point, but at the same time, I, I, I do think a lot of people are. It's either instilled in childhood. It's part of your makeup. It's part of your blueprint. Yeah something influences you when you're So you have a yearning towards achieving something that's really yours and that you created type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and brilliant. And uh, would you say you've, you've managed to hit that goal, that target? Target always moves. Okay, so that's the thing with goals. Once you hit the target, you keep, you, you, you know, you keep moving the goal and you find, you, you, you see that there's, new, there's newer um, heights to reach, I suppose, right? You have to. Yeah, so I suppose that's yeah, it's a constant uh, state of ev evolution. And you, you, I mean, people should never get comfortable with hitting a goal, really. I think it's the progression that's really, uh, the state of being in progress that's really, really important. It's what you learn along the way, I think, for me. Exactly. Think, most definitely. And no, no, I'm nowhere near what I dreamed of achieving um, yet. Yeah. Whatever it is on the horizon, the exactly. goals are Yet. set. Yet is a key word. Mm. Optimist. <laughs> yeah, perfect. In regards to our audience who are watching, they might, you know, we live in tough times. I think the market is getting really competitive for designers, you know, trying to get that role, trying to even establish a business, right? Uh, and we all go through tough times and we need that. You've spoke a lot about positivity and keeping, keeping your head up and just, you know, grinding through the, 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 the trials that may come by and just kind of keeping that smile pasted on your, on your face. Um, you know, what keeps you inspired? What keeps you moving um, in those hard and tough times? And, um, you know, is it the good experiences that happened or is it more something that you look to, something that's beyond uh, your experiences or? For me, there's, there's two things I, I, I would say. One is that when it's good, it's, it's really good. Nothing beats the buzz that you can get in a creative environment with a group of creative people that just gel and click. Mm. And the work that comes out of that, you can amaze yourself. That's the good times. And that does push you through the, the bad times. The second thing is, is having goals and setting those goals and knowing that well, this is a really rough time and it's, it's tough at the moment, but I have to go through this because that's where I want to get. I've got to walk through the mud to get there. Perfect. Okay, awesome. And how do you keep your creative uh, mind moving and full of inspiration for design? Uh, is there any kind of practices that you adopt to you know, keep uh, that creative energy going? For me, 
I try to keep learning as much as possible without overloading my brain. So I, I will read, um, I will watch videos, TED Talks, um, because for me, very much now, it's about the strategy behind what we do. And I read a lot about that to learn and develop more and more in that sense. And that enables me to lead to more creative solutions. Okay, awesome. Brilliant, bro. Um, I think that's a wrap. So Brilliant. thank you for your time, Paul. No, thank you very much.